So welcome to Finding Easy Walks, which is hosted by the Great Barrington Libraries and the Bushnell Stage Library in Sheffield. Uh, we would love it if during the presentation you, take your, you keep your mics and cameras off, or at least just your mics, um, so that we just cut down a little bit on the sound that might distract, cause distractions. Um, I heard Marjorie saying that um, if you have anything to interject, please um, raise your hand or you can also type things into the chat if you would like. Um, I think there will be a Q&A at the end um, so that if you have any questions that come up, um, you can hold them to the end or you can type them. We'll get to all the questions, don't worry. Also, I did say in the email that I sent out that um, we weren't going to be recording this, but actually we are. So I will send you a link to the recording. And if you've missed anything or you have any further questions, you'll be able to catch up the recording. Marjorie Turner Holman is a personal historian who loves the outdoors. Um, she's completed three hyper-local guides, easy walking trails in Massachusetts, and now her latest book, Finding Easy Walks Wherever You Are. With limited mobility, she uses hiking poles when heading outdoors. She's a native Floridian. She came north for college and for snow. <laughs> a freelance writer for the past 20 plus years, she's been featured on WCVB Channel 5 TV's news magazine Chronicle, as well as the Boston Globe, has presented workshops for L.L. Bean and has been published in local, regional, and national publications. Welcome, Marjorie. Oh, thank you so much. It's really, really nice to visit uh, Great Barrington and Sheffield without having to drive two hours to get there, the wonders of modern, modern technology. Um, I have been doing presentations like this this past year. I wrote a book, Finding Easy Walks Wherever You Are, that talk about how my family and I have, have used strategies and um, just basic ideas to find easy walks for me wherever we've traveled across the country and throughout New England and um, to other countries as well. Uh, I do have mobility challenges. I use walking, hiking poles, and I'll talk about that in the presentation. And um, I only take easy walks. So um, without further ado, I'd love to share with you. Um, let's see. I would love to share with you my sc the screen. So let me go to, here I am and to slideshow. And I think that's, hmm, okay. I think that's what I'm gonna be able to do is right there. So um, I'm also gonna talk about some of the things that you need to take on your next walk. So without further ado, we'll get started. And thank you so much to the Great Sher Barrington Library and the Sheffield Library for supporting my work. And why can't I get that to be a slideshow? It's not doing work. Okay. This, this picture I like to share with people to say, this is not what I would call an easy, an easy walk. There's a lot, it's just, what I try to tell people when, then when I'm looking for easy walks is the path needs to have not too many roots, not too many rocks, rel relatively level and something of interest along the way. And when I tell, use these words, people's eyes light up. They start understanding what I'm talking about because typically people will say, oh, it's an easy walk, meaning it's short or it's not rock scrambling perhaps. Um, but there's many other challenges besides a short trail that are really difficult for those of us with mobility challenges. Roots and rocks are among the biggest. So it doesn't mean that I always need handicapped accessible trails. Those are also easy walks, 
but trails that you can get out and walk and not be able to look around and not constantly be worrying about tripping. So thank you, Talia, for being my eyes and ears in Great Barrington to share these pictures that you sent me of the riverfront trail in Great Barrington, right in downtown along the Housatonic River, that there is a handicapped accessible river access for residents and visitors to enjoy right along the river. What a gift. Um, and we're, more and more trails are being built with handicapped accessibility in mind. Handicapped accessible trails present barriers to no one and they open up the outdoors to many who otherwise would not have that possibility. You have this right in Great Barrington and it's a really lovely, lovely spot. Uh, we stopped when we were visiting at Housatonic Flats and now you have the Berkshire Natural Resources Council which protects open space throughout the Berkshires and so this was, we just happened upon this spot right along the right along the river and we went there in spring and it was kind of muddy but um, we were still able to get down to the river the path was kind of wet uh, you can see there's some beaver chews along there um, spring might not be the best time but you will get river views and so it's one more spot that has relatively easy footing to be able to get to the river. So that counts as an easy walk. This is also right here in Great Barrington. I wanted to share um, my friend Marcy Marcello writes a blog, um, Everyone Out, is it Everyone Outdoors? Um, and she shared this, again, the Berkshire Natural Resource Council, Parsons Marsh in Lenox. And you can see from this, this picture, it's wide open spaces and it's got a grab, a crushed stone dust path that makes it so people in wheelchairs, parents with strollers, people using walkers can all maneuver on this trail and people just using their two feet can manage and enjoy this as well. And it looked like it was a beautiful day that Marcy visited that and I appreciate her help in, help in assisting me to get some of the pictures for this presentation. So that's Parsons Marsh in Lenox. We stopped last summer at the Beartown State Forest in Monterey, which is a neighboring town to Great Barrington. And we, because of the pandemic, the rail trails throughout the state and in other areas have just been jammed with people when there was absolutely no place else to go in the pandemic, but the outdoors to feel relatively safe. And so we were actually as a family avoiding the rail trails with our adaptive tandem bike because it was actually dangerously overcrowded. And we were looking for uh, less crowded uh, country roads, not very busy country roads. And we found this paved road through the Beartown State Forest that takes you from the forest all the way down to the Housatonic River. I think we went about seven miles and saw maybe three cars the whole time. There is a, there is a swimming area at the State Forest and that's where most of the people were the day that we visited. Some of the road had some kind of rough spots and it's very walkable. It was a little challenging for biking in a few places, but my goodness, there were beautiful, beautiful views there. And so it depends on how far you wanna walk. If you have a bike that you can use, um, there is the swimming area. It's a beautiful, beautiful space and it was a lovely, lovely find. We weren't sure what we would find when we went, but it was one of the things that I try to tell people in my book is when you're looking for easy walks, you need to be willing to explore. And so being willing to explore is what we as a family do. And then I write up blog posts about them and share them on my website, marjorieturner.com. And 
it, I always feel like I'm bringing friends along when I'm taking these pictures. And so when I'm making presentations like this, I feel like I'm bringing you along as well. So welcome and let's see what else we have today. Chesterfield Gorge is not terribly far from where you all are and that's a trustees reservation property. And the river is, is quite close to parking, but it's not handicapped accessible. It's just quick to get to. And you do have to be very careful because they're very, they're very steep drop-offs into the gorge. That's what makes it so spectacular. You can kind of see there's some potholes in the, just on the edge of the river there. It's really a, an amazing place. And trustees of reservation all over the state of Massachusetts are wonderful, wonderful places. They're not all easy walks. But, um, but they have made strides in providing places that are accessible or handicapped friendly as well as handicapped accessible. And Chesterfield Gorge is one of those that it's, it's just not that hard to see from the parking area. You don't have to walk a long ways to get there, the Westfield River. The Harlem Valley Rail Trail is a paved rail trail that now has 23 plus miles of paved rail trail for walking, for biking, for rollerblading, for pushing children in strollers. Um, it's, it's just an amazing resource. There's still some sections that are not connected, but since we were there when this picture was taken, uh, a whole bunch more of the trail, especially around in Millerton, has been connected. And this is one of the views that you will get, just one. It's, it's really a spectacular, spectacular rail trail. Um, I, you know, I, I'm excited every time I see the work that's happening to develop these former rail beds and turn them into alternative transportation and recreation areas. So the Harlem Valley is a gorgeous area to begin with. And the rail trail is a, a wonderful, wonderful way to get out of your car, get out on your foot on foot or on your bike and enjoy what's out there. It's spectacular. Bashfish Falls has two trails. One from the Massachusetts side is rather steep and very difficult. It is not an easy walk. It's a very spectacular uh, waterfall, as you can see in the, in the back. That's not even the full height of the waterfall. But from the New York side on Route 344, there is a road, there's a path that I call an easy walk. And here's what it looks like. And that's where Marcy, again, came to the rescue and provided me a picture of the path. When I was there, I was so busy taking pictures of the, the stream beside the path that I didn't really pay attention to the path itself. You can see there are some routes, but they're not all routes. So for those of us who need a handicapped friendly path, this is a handicapped friendly path. It's between a half mile and three quarters of a mile to get to the falls but it's very level. It, it, does, um, it does have a bit of an incline. Uh, and I honestly, it's been a while, so I can't remember which direction, if it goes up or down, getting to the falls right now. But um, there is a bit of an incline, but the footing is sound and um, this, the views are just amazing. So that's worth going. I understand from my social media reading that it's quite busy, especially on weekends. So you might want to plan a visit on weekdays or early morning or perhaps towards sunset. But if it's sunset, make sure and plan your, your walk. I will talk a little bit more about if you're leaving after lunchtime, one of the things that you want to bring. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Uh, Kite Hill in Columbia County, Millerton, New York, we found this beautiful grassy easy walk to a view. We were just driving on Catalano Road and I understand there's a whole bunch of connected more difficult trails, but this was a grassy easy walk 
to this crest of this gentle hill where you could get some amazing views. So this is an easy walk for those of it, those of you who are looking for that. Um, it is not handicapped accessible. Grass is not by itself handicapped accessible. You'd need a, a crushed stone or paved surface. That's not what you have. You have a mowed track that gets up to this beautiful view, but it, that makes it handicapped friendly. So um, more and more views. You have so many gorgeous views in the Berkshires. Now I want to talk a little bit about just some of the basics of, of if people are newer to hiking, which I don't know that that's at all the case. In, for you all who are here, I just like to remind people that it's good to wear closed toed shoes. Open toed shoes oh, oh, create, make you more vulnerable to foot injury. Uh, you see that these boots have a little bit of lug soles, just gives you a little better grip when you're on a trail. Um, my hiking socks, those are not just my regular socks. I can't wear wool. That's what people are supposed to wear, wool to keep them warmer. Some of us are allergic to wool. So this is the best that I could do. And it's a thick, comfortable sock. And I always urge people, don't throw those hiking socks into your washer and dryer every time you use them. They will very soon lose any kind of elastic and you'll find them down inside of your boot and making your walk not very fun at all. They will take the easy out of an easy walk very quickly if you've got hiking socks with no elastic. Ask me how I know this. So don't ever put them in the dryer if you can help it, line dry them, or don't even wash them, just let them air dry after your walk. They will be fine. Take a small pack with you. If you don't have a small pack like I have, an old school backpack works fine. It's probably in your coat closet. You haven't even thought, remembered that you had it there. It, it just keeps everything in one place and keeps your hands free to either use hiking poles or to help with anything along the trail, moving branches out of the way, whatever you need your hands for. You're not paying attention to the things you're carrying. They're all safely stowed and you can pay attention to your footing. You can pay attention to the beautiful things right around you. You wanna make sure you bring a sealed water bottle with fresh water in it. Uh, a lot of the uh, disposable water bottles have very, very flimsy tops and those are gonna come off if you have any kind of, if you trip and land on it, everything is gonna get soaked. You wanna make sure and have a sturdy water bottle with a good seal so that you don't get everything in your pack wet. You wanna bring snacks for each person in your group. It doesn't have to be a store-bought granola bar, homemade gorp works fine, peanuts, any other kind of nuts, whatever you're not allergic to, mixed in with some chocolate and some craisins or raisins, um, whatever your preference, maybe some M&Ms, uh, just have something so that you can stop and take a break when you're out on the trail to make sure that by the time you get back, people say, let's do that again, as opposed to, oh, I never want to do that ever again. A little bit of snack can make that difference. And then the headlamps that I was referring to, especially if you leave after a lunchtime, especially when you move into fall and winter, and a very especially when you're like you, when you're in the mountains, sundown comes much quicker and it can kind of surprise you that it's getting dark sooner than you might officially expect sundown to happen. Just tuck, tuck in one of those headlamps, keeps your hands free. You pr put it in your pack and you might not ever use it. Make sure the batteries are good before you go out. But for that one time that you really need it, you're going to be really, really glad that you have it and it can make the difference between returning home without injury and being very, very vulnerable to getting injured on the trail. And so the whole package, make sure you get your fully charged cell phone, 
Sometimes cell phones don't work in the mountains. You can't count on that. I like to encourage people if they're starting at a trail and there's a map of the kiosk, if they haven't printed out a map to bring with them, you might have a map online, but that online might not be working. Take a picture of your on with your cell phone of that map. So then you have it on your phone, whether you've got cell reception or not. You got your pack, you got your boots and your socks, water, snack, your fully, your fully charged cell phone and your headlamp, and you're pretty good to go. So let's see what else we're gonna do. I like to remind people that cemeteries are a great place to all, every, every community has amazing cemeteries. I can't begin to tell you where the best cemeteries are in your area. This was one that I just stopped at in Menden, Massachusetts, near where I live. And this beautiful sugar maple was ablaze in the fall. I stopped and got a picture of that. But they make great, easy, great places to find easy walks. A lot of times they will have paved driveways or at least dirt paths for cars to drive in to access the cemetery. Different cemeteries have different rules for visitation. And so it behooves you if you would like to visit a cemetery for walking purposes, remember that they are sacred places of remembrance first. If there's a, if there's a memorial service going on, an interment, make sure you give them space and don't intrude. It's a family, it's, that's an important time for a family and you really don't want to compromise that for a family who's at the cemetery for what cemeteries were built for as sacred places of remembrance. But golly, they make beautiful places to visit. Birds love them. You're gonna see lots of birds. You're not gonna have power lines typically. Most cemeteries do not have any power lines going through them. The residents do not need them. And they're just wonderful places to find easy walks in any of your com local communities. The dinosaur footprints. Here I am along the Connecticut River. You see, I've got my hiking poles and that's in Holyoke. And I've got rubber tips because when you're walking around on rocks like this near the river, those rubber, rubber tips give you some extra purchase. So the metal tips of your hiking poles aren't skittering all around. And um, the dinosaur footprints are still there. It's another trustees of reservation property along the Connecticut River and in Holyoke and some beautiful river views, but yes, you actually can see the dinosaur footprints. They look like giant chickens. And if you have not been there, it's worth the visit. It's a delightful place. I have pictures of my children tracing the, trying to step in the giant footsteps of the dinosaurs that came out of the river and onto the mud banks that were the banks of the Connecticut River in the time of the dinosaurs. Amazing, amazing place. And we've got a views from Mount Greylock. The, the wonderful thing about Mount Greylock is in the season, and I believe it's open now. Um, I believe it wasn't open until just in the last week. The auto road to the top of Mount Greylock is open. So those of us who cannot hike up a mountain can drive up a mountain, walk around the whole mountaintop there and take in the 360 views that are offered from Mount Greylock. It's an amazing, amazing place. And I thank my friend Christine. I have pictures and I could not find them. So my friend Christine came up and provided that. I'm very, very grateful to her. Now, I'm not even sure how to say this, Lake Tuckhannock State Park in Ancrum, New York. We just happened to stop here on our way coming back from visiting family in Poughkeepsie. And we were looking for an uncrowded place. And I, I'm not sure what time of year it was that we stopped, but we found that there was an easy fire road around the lake. I think it was late summer. The campground was not open because of the pandemic. So there weren't really people there, but when the, when the state park is open, they have boat rentals, they've got swimming, 
they've got camping, and this easy fire road makes it so that for walks, for easy walks, you can get water views all along the lake from this state park. And I just, I'm not sure if people were familiar with it. It was a sweet little discovery that when we were exploring on our way back home from a visit, that we came across this and said, oh, isn't this lovely? So some of the other things that you are in the not must have, but good to have. And I, I urge people, if you have balance issues, consider using hiking poles. I was the most resistant to using hiking poles. And then I only wanted to use one. And when I finally gave in and started using two, I discovered that it's like walking on hands, like your hands and knees. You've got four points of contact and it truly makes a difference. It has saved me from, I can't, countless falls on the trail. It is super, super helpful going up, especially water bars that are on along, along a trail that's steep, that are built so that there's not as much erosion, but climbing those water bars can be really challenging. And the hiking poles make a difference. Coming back down those slopes the hiking poles act like extra brakes and are truly, truly useful. You want to bring a map of the area you visit. And I talked about if you don't have a map and you see a map at a kiosk at a trailhead, take a picture of that with your cell phone so you'll have it with you if you need to consult and you feel like the markings aren't very clear. Bring your binoculars. There's almost always birds on the trails that we visit, especially if there's any kind of interest like water, like ponds or streams. There are almost always birds somewhere around these sources of water. Bring your camera. Yes, your, your cell phone has a camera, but other cameras at, with zoom lenses, you can get a lot better pictures, especially if you want to do any kind of photographing of wildlife, especially of birds. Your cell phone is not going to do much when you're trying to capture pictures of birds. Make sure you bring rain gear and rain gear can double as a windbreaker. So we always just stuff our rain jackets in our backpacks so that whether it rains or not, if the weather changes, we can just pull on that extra windbreak and it makes a huge difference in keeping you colder, keeping you more comfortable as cooler weather comes in. Right now we're moving into summer weather and so that isn't as much a difference, a concern. Um, blaze orange clothing in hunting season and it in fact is required in some states like Rhode Island that you have at least 500 square inches of blaze orange clothing in every hunting season, which includes turkey season in the spring. So that's, I believe that's in April or May. I, I'd have to check. But um, if you are not familiar with the laws of the state you're in, Massachusetts allows no hunting in, uh, on, on Sundays. So you don't have to worry as much. We just, as a matter of course, wear blaze orange throughout the hunting season and just keep it in our car and keep it ready to pull out no matter what. Individual must-haves. And there I, I wanna just address those of you who have been prescribed EpiPens or asthma inhalers. Please never leave these essential life-saving medications in your car. If you're out on the trail and you step on a ground wasp nest, you need that EpiPen now. You will not have time to get back to your car in time to save your life. Same with the asthma inhaler. If you find that you're in any kind of trouble, you will not have time. This is breathing. And so do not leave them in your car. Not only bring them with you, put them in your pack, but tell someone you trust that you're walking with where this life-saving medication is 
So if you are in distress, they're not pulling your whole backpack apart, trying desperately to find this medication you promised them was there. Tell them where it is, how to find it, make it easily accessible in an emergency, and hopefully you will never have that emergency. I truly hope so, but please don't leave it in your car. Poison ivy is another factor that I'm always amazed at the people that we cross paths with on trails who have no idea that they're skimming the edges of poison ivy that's trying to creep into the path of whether it's a, a dirt path or a rail trail. Um, poison ivy loves the edges of rail trails. And I'm always surprised at people who say, oh, I didn't recognize that. This is what it looks like in the fall. This is what it looks like climbing up a tree. Those hairy roots are just as nasty as the rest of the plant. So educate yourself. There are hundreds, probably thousands of photographs on the on just Google poison ivy and you'll have your pick of poison ivy pictures to start educating yourself and then practice spotting it. Right now, it's very small, almost bronzy color, colored leaves as it's just sprouting again in the spring. And pretty soon it'll be those glossy green for the summer. But uh, it, it looks very, takes many different forms, but learn to recognize poison ivy. Poison sumac is mostly in wetlands. Um, if you have wetlands that you frequent, you need to educate yourself what poison sumac looks like as well. We don't have poison oak typically here. It is a more of a Western plant. If you're hiking in California, you best understand what poison oak looks like. When you see signs on a trail, not necessarily as funny as this one. And I thank my friend Kate who snapped this picture when she was traveling, following a trail in, out in Hawaii. But um, if you see signs, typically they will be signs that tell you things like, this is an easement, stay on the trail. If you choose to disregard signs that you see on the trail, you may be the cause of a private easement that's been allowed, a public easement that's been allowed over private property, that public easement may be withdrawn if people do not pay attention to the signs and respect them. So when you see a sign, stop and read it. See what it says. Hopefully you can understand what it's trying to tell you and then follow the directions that it gives you as best you're able. Skinner State Park, the Summit House in Hadley is another uh, pretty accessible road all, that you can drive all the way up to the top and then a very small walk up to the Summit House where you've got stunning, stunning views of the Connecticut River coming through the area. Such a, such a beautiful, beautiful area. There are a number of places that you can get views and not that many that you can drive up to. There are some, but these are just a few. The Ashwiltakuk Rail Trail has views of Mount Greylock in the distance there, and that's 12 miles of paved rail trail from Cheshire to Adams. Um, just a beautiful ponds, mountain views. Um, we are so lucky to have these rail trails. The, the state of Massachusetts is investing more States all across the country are investing in rail trails. There is a demand and a hunger. As many of you may have seen during this pandemic, people have really affirmed how important rail trails, open space, recreation areas are for all of us. And there's the Norwadic Rail Trail. It goes from Hadley to Northampton. That's, this is a bridge that takes you right over the Connecticut River, just spectacular views along there. So uh, well worth making, making the, the 
point to get on these rail trails and just take in the views, whether by bike or by foot or by roller skate or by stroller with your children. And so here I've got my rain jacket on, my windbreaker. Um, I, I care, I'm still wearing a mask when I'm outdoors. That's our own family stuff. Though we've been vaccinated, we are still being very, very cautious. Uh, we don't demand anybody else, but that's what we are doing. And those are my hiking poles that keep me balanced. You see, I've got my pants tucked into my socks and this is for tick protection. Uh, and anytime you're out on trails, especially if you're doing any kind of bushwhacking, but even on open trails, ticks can drop down onto your clothes or just brushing a, bru a bush or anything, they will cling on to you. And so tucking your pants into your hiking socks is one way just to make less skin available for those ticks to find purchase and start take biting, which is what you want to avoid. So this was a picture just a uh, hot brook preserve where there's a little triple cascade, uh, a very, a very small waterfall in Blackstone, Massachusetts, near where we live. And back to East Hampton, the Arcadia Wildlife Sanctuary. You've got views of the Connecticut River you can walk along, and you've got these easy walk trails through the Arcadia Wildlife Sanctuary. Lovely, lovely Mass Audubon spot. Uh, remember, if you have dogs, Mass Audubon never welcomes dogs. They are all wildlife refuges. So dogs are not welcome. There are many other places. Trustees of Reservation almost always welcomes dogs. So check before you go. Uh, but know that Mass Audubon does not welcome dogs ever on their properties. A photo tip, if you're trying to capture foliage or even in the winter, don't forget to look up. We often look around or we're looking out at beautiful scenes, but sometimes if you just stop and look up what's right overhead, you can get some amazing views of the woodland that you might not appreciate otherwise. So don't forget when you're, when you're out in the woods, look up. And then I wanna just give you these resources, everyoneoutdoors.blogspot.com. Marcy Marcello is with DCR and this is one of her DCR duties is maintaining this blog and she's, it is a, a wealth of information of handicapped accessible, wheelchair accessible trails throughout the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. A great, great resource with pictures. She describes slopes. Uh, she describes where the parking is. She gives you addresses. Wonderful, wonderful resource. And she does have several that are, that are in, um, in the Berkshires. She's more, she's actually in um, Northfield, so a little east of you, but um, lots and lots of, of handicapped accessible. On Instagram, a, a family that I've been following on Instagram is Berkshire Family Hikes, and they take their children everywhere. And so this is not necessarily handicapped accessible, but they are family friendly and they've got children of all ages from toddlers on up. And so Ber the Berkshire Family Hikes is a, is a page on Instagram that you would wanna follow. Um, and then hiking in the Berkshires with Berkshire Greenleaf. I just came across this and they're a community based hiking page specifically focused on the Berkshires. So, and also there's my um, Easy Walks page I'll tell you about in a minute. These are my, my hyper-local books and they are more South Central Massachusetts and Southeastern. Uh, the Easy Walks and Paddles actually gets down into the Attleboro area. So I don't expect 
that typically people from the Berkshires are going to be interested in these books because they are very, very specific. Uh, between the three books, there's about 130 all easy walks that I have walked, all of them documented, told you whether dogs are welcome, where to park, maps to trailheads, distances, um, whether dogs are welcome, whether they're handicapped accessible or not. But I, I, this is part of why I wrote this last book, which is finding easy walks wherever you are. So people like you would ha still find something of value in a book that I could share with you. These are lessons learned, tips and strategies that we have come up with to help me and hopefully others of you find easy walks wherever you are. So I invite you, the um, Great Barrington and Sheffield Library each have copies of easy walks, finding easy walks wherever you are for you to borrow. The book is available on Amazon. And I also invite you to join our Facebook group, Easy Walks in Massachusetts, uh, Easy Walks in Massachusetts, Easy Walks, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and nearby. And that's a group page. You just have to tell me what you enjoy about Easy Walks. And I will let you in and join nearly 5,000 other people that have said they wanted to find Easy Walks. So um, we've got people from across the state, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, and a little farther afield. It's typically New England folks that are there. and people contribute pictures, contribute information, answer and respond, and then I contribute things as well. But we encourage participants to, to uh, share what they have. So thank you for joining us. And I'm going to stop sharing and come back so I can answer some questions. So um, the Harlem Rail Trail. Uh, thank you. OK, Millerton is one of the entrances. There are multiple, multiple entrances for the Harlem Rail Trail. And the easiest way to do it is simply to Google it. And a map will come up pretty quickly if you Google Harlem Rail Trail. So any other questions? All right. And Talia, thank you again so much for inviting me to join you. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, I, I don't know if this is a question that you'll know the answer to, and I can probably look it up. But um, when you say Mass Audubon is not, doesn't welcome dogs, um, can you have a service dog on an Audubon property? Do you know? I'm, I bet that you can. And because that's ADA law that service dogs cannot be barred from public places. I would, I would call and just talk to them about what their policy is. Mm -hmm. I would not want to speak for them, but typically, and, and service dogs are a whole, I mean, service dogs are leashed. They stay with their owners. They do not chase things. They're tra trained. So, um, I, my guess is that service dogs don't even count as dogs, right. but um, e regular dogs on leashes are not welcome at Mass Audubon. But I, I would just call and just make sure and be clear about their policy, but I can't imagine that they legally could bar someone with a service dog from visiting their property. So does, does anyone else have any other places that they were thinking of that I I'm, honestly, I'm sure I missed lots and lots of places that are out there. I am, this is not meant to be comprehensive. It's meant to encourage you to get out and explore.
So any anything else that you would like to comment or ask about? hikes that, and walks that my family takes, and I think all of them, I don't think any of them would quite count as an easy walk. Yeah, I, uh, your area is pretty rugged, yeah. but, um, but I do know that there are places, and that's where the rail trails have become so valuable, and that's where I wanted to share that Beartown State Forest that it was actually a, a really lovely, we had a wonderful time. And it's just a very underused country road. And we weren't feeling like we were watching for traffic. Like I said, we saw maybe three cars the whole time we were there. And the busy place was at the water. Yeah. But just walking along the road and getting all the way down to the Housatonic River at the end of that road, um, was beautiful. Are there groups in the Berkshires that go on easy walks? Um, as I was, as I was saying that, um, let's see, the Berkshires uh, hiking in the Berkshires with Berkshire Greenleaf, that Facebook group. I would encourage you to seek them out because I believe they do help facilitate people going on walks together. You're very, very welcome. And I'm so excited. I just found that I, I honestly didn't know about this group till just the other day. I stumbled across them and said, ooh, that's one more thing I can add to the presentation. So was I, I, I'm not sure if I was stating the obvious to everyone here. I hope that there were some things that you got from this that were helpful. Um, I do encourage you to, are your, are your libraries open now, Talia? Um, one of our, uh, Mason is open uh, for two hours in the afternoons, Tuesday through Friday for limited browsing. Okay. Um, other library, Bramsdell, is not yet, um, and I'm not actually sure about that. I think they are, they do have some limited hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I encourage you to, oh, you're welcome, Susan, thank you. Um, but, but we are open for, um, we, we can send books out, so if anybody wants a copy, a copy of the Easy Walks, we can always send them you know, to library loan if you're not the bulk of the Great, great. All right. Oh, it's being very, very hard to understand you right now, Talia. I'm so okay. sorry. It's not important. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, well, I appreciate people taking time on what's a beautiful, beautiful, feels like summer evening and joining us. And I do hope that this gives you some, some ideas of some places to go and some ideas of ways to connect with other people in your area. And I can also just tell you, I, I also encourage people, um, talk to your senior centers and see if there's a walking group with in, in your local senior center. And if there isn't, perhaps you would like to start one. So sometimes it just takes one person who's interested and you find out, I know there's lots of people who don't want to hike alone, uh, particularly women. And, um, and so sometimes if you create it and make the invitation, you'll find that there are other people that they don't know where to start either. So you've already got a start of, um, of some places that you can suggest. And this is recorded so you can review it and go back over it and take, I, take notes or not. But um, 
lots and lots of places that you could go and enjoy being in the outdoors. So Talia, um, if there aren't any other questions, I will, I will let you all get going. Is there anything else you wanted to say to close things out? Um, no, uh, thank you everybody very much for coming. And um, this is actually our last virtual program until Labor Day. Um, we're taking a bit of a hiatus because the weather is so nice and people probably will want to be out in it. Yes. Uh, but it's been a wonderful virtual programming season or remote programming season. And thank everybody who supported us. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Really, really, really enjoyed this and, and really enjoyed the challenge of being able to point you to some places that I hope might some of them might be new for you. So, so happy trails and I will leave you here and thank you again. Thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, bye-bye.